We know that Jesus is coming soon. He's coming sooner than what you think. And we don't hear this too much being preached in our churches today. It used to be, you know, that constantly we would be hearing messages on the trumpet of God. Amen. When the trumpet of God would sound and the hymns, the songs, there were a lot of them were, were about the coming of the Lord. And that sort of have died out. I think we have, we have kind of kind of gotten used to just just floating and and really not taking any responsibility. See, I want you to know your Christian life has responsibility. Amen. God has a demand on you. Same way He blesses us, He expects. For us to be faithful in those blessings. And as sure as you're sitting here this morning, I can guarantee you without a shadow of a doubt, Jesus is coming back soon. Sooner than what we think. Sooner than what we think. And he's preparing a church. He's preparing a church. That he's going to call out of this world. And that's you and me. Turn to somebody this morning and say he's talking to you. How many are glad you are a part of the church, the body of Christ? Come on. Can we give Jesus a great praise this morning? Amen. Amen. That's why I want to speak to you about keeping the faith. Because we know that your day is coming. Our day is coming. That great day of the Lord. Matthew 25 verse 1 through 13 says, then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, everybody say midnight. midnight. At midnight, a cry was heard. Say cry. cry. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered saying, no, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. After the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, as surely as I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the son of man is coming. Tragic, a great day, and yet a tragic day. And those days do happen. They still happen. I don't know if you ever missed an important appointment that you made, or a date, or a commitment. You were supposed to be somewhere, and you never got there. Or you got there too late. Early in my ministry, in my calling, I was in Bible college and I was preparing for the ministry and I was so excited about my future and, and, and I was listening to everybody. I was looking to David Wilkerson. I was looking to Billy Graham. I was looking, you, you know, I was looking to all these because my dream was not small. My dream was big. I want to be like Billy Graham. Why not? I want to be another David Wilkerson, another Nikki Cruz. I wanted to be somebody great. I wanted to preach the gospel. And during my last year, I had a, a friend, a pastor friend that I had preached at his church. 
Uh, he was the pastor of Melody Land Christian Center. Great church. He was very much involved with some of the big people, Catherine Kuhlman, Oral Roberts. You know, this guy was big. And one day he invited me. I said, wow. Another time he invited me to go to a prayer meeting. He said, Victor, you can't miss this prayer meeting because this prayer meeting is very, very important for you. Well, we know that to go to a prayer meeting is good, right? It's, how many know it's good to pray? And so, you know, that, that was great, you know, that I was going to go to this prayer meeting. But then he said something to me. He said, the reason why I want you to come to this prayer meeting is because I know you're, you're kicking off, your, you're about to kick off your ministry and you need to have good connections and good contacts and good support. And, and he says, look, I know it's not all about money, but, you know, I'm going to have some millionaires there, Christian millionaires. And they love to support the work of God. So you need to get to know these guys. How many know it's not a bad idea to know somebody that has money? Right? You're not going to hang out all the time with people that don't have money. Amen? And I got all excited because I thought, wow, this is going to be great for our ministry coming and out starting off. We need contacts. We need connections, you know? So I got all excited. The problem was that when the time came, I totally neglected to study the road, the trip to the prayer meeting. I took it for granted. In those days, we had no GPS. We had no cell phones. You got lost, you got lost. Unless you get off the road and use the public telephone to call and that's gonna delay you even more. And then on top of that, I left late. But I thought, you know, I'll make it, I'll make it. That's famous with a lot of Christians, you know, coming in late, right? They miss the worship. They miss the best part. They miss, miss the worship, right? Well, we got preachers like that too. Show up the last minute. Well, in my case, I really messed it up. And I got on those, on those freeways in Los Angeles. And you know, when you, you miss one of those freeways, uh, brother, you are gone for a long time. And then you come back and you see another freeway. They all look the same. And, and you know, I forgot to write down the exact directions and all this. I was going crazy. I was worried. I, 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 I mean, I was trembling. I said, my God, I'm going to miss this. This is so important. And guess what? I missed. When I got there, there was nobody there. Only the pastor who gave me a little rebuke. <laughs> he said, what happened? I was expecting you. You missed it. You missed the great blessing. And I said, oh, my God, I know. And I could kick myself. I rode back home. It was about an hour trip. And I rode back home. And, and I mean, I was broken. I was weeping. I was asking God to forgive me. And, and I don't know how in the world I did this. How could I miss such an important, such an important meeting? Well, you know, that taught me a great lesson. God turned it around for the good. And I'm glad it happened early in my calling. And I learned something. I learned never be late for what God has for you. Never be late for what God has for you. Never take it for granted. Never compromise it. If there's one appointment you never want to miss, that's your appointment with Jesus. And especially when he returns and comes back for your soul. You don't want to miss that. And it could happen. It could happen. Verse 6 says, And at midnight a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. There are three things that are non-negotiable. One of them is the light of Jesus in your life. The light of God. 
that keeps you alert, keeps you awake. Amen? You see, as Christians and followers of Jesus, we are called to walk in the light. First of all, to walk in the light. Now, we may live in, the, in a dark world, and we do. We live in a very dark world. But the Bible teaches us that we're not part of this world. Jesus, when we come to Christ, when we come to Jesus, he calls us out of darkness unto the kingdom of his light. So that as Christians, we no longer walk in darkness, but we walk in the light. We know what's happening. We are alert. We are aware. We are awakened. But when we're in the dark, it's a different story. Colossians 1.13 says he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. He has translated us. He has lifted us up from a dark world. Amen. We may be in a very dark world and there's no doubt that this is a very dark hour in the history of the world. But I got news for you. If you love Jesus and you are a Christian and you are a child of God, amen, and you're walking with Jesus, you are not of this world. You've been translated. And you're standing in the light, walking in the light of his glory. First Peter 2, 9 says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you, notice, out of darkness into his marvelous light. So when we speak of light, we also speak of darkness, of course. When the Bible speaks of light, it is speaking also of the opposite, which is the darkness. But when God works in your life, he works in your life. He deals with you from the viewpoint of his light. God doesn't deal with you from the viewpoint of darkness. In darkness, you don't get anywhere. In darkness, you're not going to receive anything. It's in the light where God comes to us where God comes to us and heals us and changes us and transforms our lives. Listen, anything good God is going to do in your life, he's going to do it from the light and in the light and for the light. So he's going to do it in the light and he wants to keep you in the light all the time walking in the light. I mean, we go back to the beginning of things, so Genesis chapter 1, where God, God gives form, God gives shape to the earth. Because the Bible says the earth was without shape, without form. It, it had no real defined purpose as far as uh, the different parts of the earth. I mean, today we look at the earth, right? So we live in a beautiful world. How many know we live in a beautiful world? The earth is beautiful. I've been to places where it's breathtaking. Oh, the lakes, the mountains, the rolling hills, my God. And sometimes you stand uh, uh, on a mountain and you look down the valley and you see the lakes and the streams of water and the green and you see all of that and you just can't help it to say, oh, hallelujah, what a mighty God you are. The flowers, the different colors, everything that God has given us. The other day, uh, you know, somebody gave Carmen some flowers. I didn't get jealous. <laughs> but it was a guy. <laughs> I always tell guys this. You want to dance with my wife? You got to dance with me first. But he brought up beautiful flowers and, and, and he put them on top of the table and, and you know, it was Brother Jim. And, and he, you know, and he just blessed them with these beautiful flowers that he grew in his own garden. And all I could think about is the beauty of God. But you see, that didn't come until the light came before that. There were no flowers. There was no shape until the light came. It's right here in the word. 
In the beginning, God, notice, created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form, void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, notice, then God said, notice, then God said, what was the first thing he said? Let there be light. Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. So if you follow creation, you're going to see that whatever came after that, whatever God did, he did it in the light. God always works in the light. That's why he wants you in the light. And when you are in the light, you are alert, you are awake. You know, when we go out on, when we go out on the street on Friday night, right, we go out at night. Why do we go out at night? Because that's when all the crazy people are walking the streets <laughs> in the dark, right? They live in the dark. You go over there at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you ain't going to see nobody. But you go at 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10, 11, 12. Carmen and I used to go witnessing in New York City in Times Square at 12 midnight. Here with these two crazy people, 12 midnight, praying for prostitutes and praying for drug addicts and praying for people from all walks of life. And it was during the night time, but the Lord was bringing them into the light once they got saved and they came to Jesus. Listen, if your expectancy is to live a life that is blessed and prosperous in the things of God, then you must walk in the light. Isaiah 61 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. John chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 3 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was, notice, the light of man. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. It was no match for it. And when you are walking in the light, when you are walking in the light of Jesus, that's when God is working in your life. And the devil may try to do his thing or whatever he wants to do. It doesn't matter. You are in the light and the darkness will never overtake the light. That's why you can walk in a real dark room, turn on a candle and the whole room will light up. And the darkness cannot control it. Because light is more powerful than darkness. That's where you and I are called. We're called to the light. We are called to walk in the light. We're, we're, we're called to serve God in the light. Amen. And that light really is the word of God. You don't have any better light. Remember, and God said. And every time he said seven times, he created something. Every time he said something. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. How many praise God for the word of God here this morning? Amen. And, and that's, that's, that is what God is going to use in your life. To shape you. To prepare you. To keep you strong in the Lord. So no matter what you face in this life, amen, you will always have enough fuel. You will always have oil in your lamp. You will always have the light. So that when the moment of challenge comes, when that great day comes, it may be the coming of Jesus, or it could be that God is speaking to you right now because he's got a calling on your life, amen. But because you are barked down with so many things of this world, you're not hearing what God is calling you for, what God has for you. God's word. 2 Peter 1, 21 says, and so we have the prophetic word confirmed. 
which you do well, notice, you do well to heed as a light that shines in the dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. You see, what's going to keep you awake and alert and keep you productive until Jesus comes is going to be the light of the word. The word of God constantly working in you. You see, it's not that we get saved today. See, the point is not that you are where you are. It's how are you going to get to where God wants to take you? Because he wants to take you from here to there. That's salvation. The Christian life is not just one day. It's not just the season. No, it's from here to there. How are you going to get from here to there? And then when you get there, are you going to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit? Are you going to have what it takes to enter into the fullness of the joy of the Lord? Salvation is not temporary. Salvation is not just for a few days. You don't get saved, become a Christian for just a season. You get saved forever. I said you get saved forever. Say ever. Say ever. And ever. And ever. Come on. How long is eternity? I said how long is eternity? Now to get an eternal salvation, you got to get ready. You better be ready and you better have the right stuff. And allow the Holy Spirit to prepare you. See? Because you can easily miss God. Just like the five foolish versions that miss their greatest moment in life. Their greatest moment in life. They missed it. Because their oil ran out. They didn't have enough. They were there. It's interesting. You know, they were there. They were together with the ten versions. They were all together. They all had lamps. Just like, you know, uh, you know, a lot of people come to church. We're here. We're here. Okay? But not all of them made it. Because they didn't have what it takes. Can that be possible? Can it be possible that we can lose what God has blessed us with? I've been preaching this word for years and I can tell you I see it all the time. I see compromise. I see so many things happen where people lose sound. They, they lose. They, they don't think about, you know, the day of temptation. They don't think about the day of trial. They don't think, you, you, you know, let me tell you something. We don't know when Jesus is coming. He may come tonight. You don't know that. I don't know that. You don't know when, 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 you know, the devil's going to attack you. You don't know that. He's going to attack you any, any moment, any time. He, he, can throw a, he can throw a stone in your path, a, a log or something, and trip you up and all that. We don't know that. He does it all the time. I know. I know what that is. But when you are prepared... When you've given it time, when you've given it dedication, and you appreciate your, your life in the Lord, your re- how many appreciate your life in the Lord? You appreciate, amen. Listen, let me tell you something. There's nothing like walking in here, walking in this place. There's nothing like walking in here and feeling the presence of God, hallelujah, and you begin to worship God. And maybe last week you was down, but suddenly you come into the house of God and something supernatural happens, hallelujah. God begins to minister to your heart and to your encouragement. And by the time you walk out of here, you are ready to face tomorrow. I remember there was a time, you know, Rosa had a little business and, in, at the mall, Chesterfield. Well, Carmen and I started first selling ties from our home. Then Rosa caught the vision. She said, we can get those ties. We can start this. And, you know, she's very creative. The next thing you know, she's running a store at the mall to sell ties. And we sold ties. We had theme ties. We had Superman ties. We had Batman ties. <laughs> We had Mickey Mouse ties. We had Christmas ties. We had all kinds of ties, silk ties and 
wool ties and whatever else ties. We sold them. But here's the good part. We used to go to New York and buy them for 50 cents to a dollar a tie and sell them. Sorry, but you got to make money. We used to sell them for $24.95. How many lots of good profit? Christmas would come around the corner. we rack up. We had a mile-long line buying gifts uh, for their dads, you know, ties. Father's Day, forget it. The, whole story. the next day, the, door was, the, the store was, uh, was empty. And one Father's Day, you know, I mean, everything was selling out real fast. So, so Rosa said, man, I have to buy some more ties. And, you know, so she sent us to New York. We said, we'll go to New York. We'll buy some ties, Carmen and I. And so we would go to New York. And by the way, we named the store I for a tie. It's a good name, right? We went to New York. I had a little over $2,000 in my pocket and cash. We, 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 we went with cash because that's the way you get the deals. So we took ties, uh, cash. Went to New York and we're in this Thai place and this, this kid about 18, 19 years of age, you know, he was watching. He was watching me you know, from the corner of his eye. And of course, you know, I'm street wise, you know, but I never thought I would get mugged. Not me, New York, Victor Torres, get mugged. No way. No way am I going to get mugged. This kid was slick. And I noticed he was following me, you see. And so we bought a few things first. You know, we still had $2,000 left over, you know, and I walked out of the shop. We went to the corner of 5th Avenue and what is it, 38th or 36th Avenue where the, where the Garmin District is at, you know, and we're standing there. I'm talking to Carmen and out of nowhere, I mean out of nowhere, this kid just rushes toward me. He put one arm on my arm because he knew that this was my right arm. I was going to react. He put his left arm on my right arm. He took his right arm, put it in my pocket pulled out the whole $2,000. I mean, he was gone. 18, 19 years of age, man. He had tennis shoes on. He looked preppy, you know. He just... <laughs> See, he looked at me and he said, ah, oh, this guy's got some gray hair. You know, this guy's an old guy. What is he going to do? He's not going to chase me. What he didn't know, <laughs> what he didn't know was that for 25 years straight, I jogged, ran, walked, did everything in the book, and I was in tip-top shape. That's why today, you know, people see me and say, boy, you walk fast. I was in New York with Fernando, you know, and, and Fernando said, let's walk, you know, well, let's walk around the block, you know, and I was walking. He said, man, I can't keep up with you. <laughs> I went right after him. I mean, I went right after him. I said, he ain't going to take my money. He might be younger than me, but I could also run. And I took off and we ran for about four or five blocks. We ran, I mean, and I was gaining some ground, you know, and then this undercover policeman, you know, joins me and I see his badge is dangling, you know, from his chest. And he looks, he turns to me and says, how much did he take you for? I said, 2,000. He said, oh man, that's a lot of money, you know. But, but by the time we got to the third block, he went, <laughs> he couldn't run anymore. I kept on. I never caught up to him physically, but I ran him out. I didn't know when he turned, the last turn he made, when he turned, I didn't know what was going to happen on the other side of that block because I stopped. Right? I said, I guess he took me. Walked back to the original place. Carmen had called the police. The police was there. You know, I said, well, you know, how much did he take it for $2,000, blah, 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 blah. And then suddenly a call came on the radio. He said, bring that man, because they had already put it on the radio. Bring that man over down to Fifth, to, uh, uh, down to Lexington Avenue and, you know, come and check out this because I think we got his man. Well, what happened was, I didn't know, but as I was chasing him, I was running him into a trap. What he didn't know was that when he turned the corner, there was a sting operation of about 100 cops. 
Is God good? A hundred cops. And when he turned the corner, whoo, ran right into that trap. They got a hold of him. The next thing you know, they got him in the back seat with handcuffs on. They drive us down there to identify him. I said, yeah, that's the guy. That's the guy right there. And the first thing I asked, I said, where's my money? I said, I want my money. He said, well, we only found $800 on him. I said, $800? It's supposed to be $2,000. Well, I realized that as he was running, see, because the devil will do this. As he was running, right, he knew that I was getting ground on him, and he threw first a $100 bill on the ground to see if I would stop to pick it up, to delay me. Isn't that, that just like the devil? Yeah. Just to delay me. But he didn't realize I was counting. He had 2,000. He dropped down 100. That's 1,900. Well, how many know that 1,900 is better than nothing? 2,000, right? Then $100 bill. So I kept running. He threw another $100 bill. But I didn't stop. I was counting. You see? The idea is to have enough to get there. And when they caught him, they caught him with $1,800. Oh, they caught him with $800. Took him down to the station. At the station, of course, they searched him and all this. Then soon, we got another call. Said, they want you at the police station. So we went down there to identify the guy again. And the sergeant came up to me and he says, guess what? We found another $1,000 in his underclothes. I said, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I ended up with $1,800, but that's better than losing everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, here's the point. Here's the point. Here's the point. The reason why all that took place and I still came out on top is because I was ready. See, I was prepared. And today, I'm not boasting about this. One thing I have, I have strong legs. Yeah. And I believe that all that exercise helped me for the future. You understand what I'm saying? By the grace of God. But that's the way it works in our spiritual life. You're going to get what you put into it. You're going to get the time that you put into it. You're going to get the dedication that you put into it. You, you see, the coming of Jesus is not just about a, a one moment. It's about a journey. It's about a journey. It's about a lifetime, you see. How well are you preparing? How much are you feeding into your faith and into the things of God, you see? How much do you appreciate the things of God? You may not be the smartest person. You may not be the most spiritual person in the world, but you doing your best. Amen. You are putting into your faith everything that you can every single day. Amen. You're not losing one step. You're keeping your prayer life going. You're keeping the reading of the word of God going. Amen. You're keeping your worship going. You're keeping coming to church going. Amen. Because you don't know when the day of temptation is going to come. You don't know when the day of trial is going to come. And one thing for sure, you want to be ready. You want to be ready. And if you do mess up, repent. And get back on track. Can I get an amen? amen. The light of God's word. The promises of God. The word is what's going to keep you. Because we don't know if Jesus is coming tonight, tomorrow, the next day. You might be in this world for 50, 100 years. We don't know. We really don't know. The Bible says no man knows the hour, nor the time. But if you study the coming of Jesus, which is all over the Bible, prophetically in the New Testament, and we're not preaching enough about it, amen? We're not preaching enough about it, but it's a reality. It's part of your Christian faith. Part of your Christian faith is to prepare, to be ready. To be alert, to have ears for the Holy Spirit. Not just because of that great day when God will call you. But he may call you now, in the now, for what he has for you today. Amen. And if you can't receive it, you're going to miss it. But God.
doesn't want you to miss anything. He wants you blessed. Amen. How many know he wants you blessed? How many blessed people we have here this morning? He wants you blessed. He wants you strong. There was a time when Carmen and I went through, in the beginning of our ministry, we went through a hard time. We went through a hard time. And we thought we were going to lose our personal house that was given to us. We had a miracle house in the beginning. We had no money to buy a house. And a brother, a real estate guy, gave us the house, gave, put a beautiful brand new home. Gave it to us. We were so happy. And now suddenly we come to a point where we're thinking we're going to lose it. We're going to have to sell all the properties, the ministry, the center. There was a recession going on. Money was not coming in. It was tough. How many know what I'm talking about? Sometimes you come to these dry spells in your life. You, you come to, to valleys. You come to points in your life where, where you don't know how you're going to make it. You go back to the promises of God. You go back to the word of God. Amen. I can do all things through Christ. He is my strength. But at that moment, we were... I mean, we, we were done, I thought. And we're in the little living room and Carmen and I sitting there and we start praying. And, and I mean, with tears, we were praying, drinking our tears. And suddenly our little first daughter we had, she was about three years of age. She didn't even know how to read yet. She went somewhere in the house. She got a Bible and, and it was open. She brought it open and she put it on my lap and when I noticed she put it on my lap and then she went daddy like that how many know out of the mouth of babes God will perfect his praise and he said daddy and when I looked when I looked at the word and I noticed it was from Genesis chapter 28 and it was speaking about the promise that God gave Abraham. His calling. The promise that he had given him. Amen. That he become larger than the sand of the seas. And that he will bless many families in the world because of his faith. And that promise was passed on to Isaac, his son. And then it was passed on to uh, Jacob. But then we come to a point where Jacob runs. And he's running from God. And he's in a dry desert. He's in a wilderness. And then God comes back to him and reminds him that he is a child of promise. That whatever God gives to you, the world cannot take it away. If God gives it to you, the devil can't take it away. Amen. Nobody, nothing can take away from you what God gives to you. If it's from God, it's going to stand. And at that point there, I started reading Genesis 28. And I read about Jacob coming back and and, and, and he goes back to Bethel, which means the house of bread, the house of God. And there God gives him a, a vision or a dream. And he sees the angels ascending and descending. And then God reminds him. Then he dreamed. And behold, a ladder was set up on the earth. And its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending, descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie. I will give to you and your descendants. Also, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the east. Can I get an amen? Amen. To the north and the south. And in you. Notice. And in you. And in you. 
In your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Do you know that you are blessed with Father Abraham this morning? Do you know that the promise of Abraham, the promise of Isaac, the promise of Jacob is also your promise? Hallelujah. And God promises that he will bless you and multiply you. And behold, I am with you. And behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. And I want to say this. We're here right now celebrating 50 years. Not because we were idle. Not because uh, we ran away from the devil. Not because uh, we, we were lazy uh, or, or indifferent. No. You know why we're here today 50 years? Uh, because the Lord has been with us. Uh, because God is faithful to his word. Amen. And we take responsibility. You take responsibility for the blessings of God and what God gives to you. You don't push them on the side. Amen. You, you don't forsake church life. Uh, you don't forsake... Uh, uh, the Bible and the Word of God. You don't forsake the Holy Spirit. You don't minimize your prayer life. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't forget about witnessing for Jesus. Amen. You don't forget about the Holy Spirit because these are the things uh, that are going to take you through the journey until Jesus comes for your soul. Amen. I want to know how many people here want to be ready. You want to be ready? Hallelujah. a journey see lamps need oil <laughs> it's not just the bible you need the oil too amen? Amen. amen you may have a car but you need gas you say mine is electric you still got to plug it in <laughs> the bible says for the letter kills but the spirit gives life so it's not just about the Bible, the Word of God. How many love the Word of God here? Amen. But do you have the oil? Let me tell you what the Spirit of God does. The Spirit of God brings to life the Bible. Brings to life the Word of God. So it becomes life. So when you're reading it, it ministers to you. And if there's areas in your life that need to be strengthened, the Holy Spirit will use the Word. Matthew 25, 9, 12 says, but the wise answer is saying no, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. After the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, surely I say to you, I do not know you. My God, I don't know you. Lord, but I've been serving you. I've been doing all these things for you. You don't know me? You don't know me. When does that happen? It happens when you drop out. It happens when you go by the wayside. It happens when you start, stop praying. It happens when you stop coming to the house of God, learning the word, amen, becoming stronger and stronger. It's not just about one time that you may have a mishap or two times or three times. No, no, it's about getting from here to there. Getting from here to there. And making sure that you have what it takes to be the man and the woman that God wants you to be. To be the person that God wants you to be so that you will be strong. Now it's interesting that all 10 of the virgins had a lamp. They all had a lamp. When they came to the wedding, 
But only five of them had sufficient oil to endure through the night. It could be possible that all of us love Jesus. We're in this place, but we're running out of oil. Are you running out of fuel? Verse 7 and 8 says, Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. I could almost hear the five wise virgins say, No. Go get your own. Go get your own. See, mom can't give you this. Dad can't give you this. The church, as far as an organization, we can't give you this. No man can give you this. You got to get it for yourself. You got to go out and get that oil for yourself. And you get it when you surrender to Jesus, when you give your life to Christ. Amen. There are three important calls in your life. Number one, when you get saved, no man comes to the Father unless he is drawn by the Holy Spirit, unless he is, he is called by the Holy Spirit. The second call is when you're in the church and God calls you to serve him. God calls you to give, to be a part of his work. Amen. All of that keeps you going. All of that keeps you alert. It keeps you awake. And then the third one is that great cry. That great call. Thessalonians calls it a shout. There will be a shout from heaven. There will be a call from heaven. The whole world is going to hear that call. But only those that have the oil and their lamps on are going to respond to it. You'd be surprised. God is doing, God is working right now. We live in the world of technology and sometimes, you know, it's scary. It's scary what's happening right now. You know, how we can communicate with the whole world and all this. The Bible says that when Jesus comes, every eye will see him. Yes. But there's one time he's coming. It's a call that only those that are in Christ are going to hear it. Only those that love Jesus are going to hear because they're in tune with God. See, you don't want to be in the church and not be in tune with God. You don't want to be serving God in this world, amen, and so busy that you're not hearing the voice of God anymore. You're not, you're not hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. You're not listening to what God is speaking to your life. He's got better days for you. He's got better things for you. But only the believer is going to hear that shout. And the Bible says that the dead in Christ shall rise first. Think about that. Those that have gone before us, those, those that have passed on before us uh, shall rise first. Somebody said, well, you know, they cremated my grandmother. It don't matter. That matter is going to come back together. It's going to take a form and it's going to be raised to the heavens. Uh, if she loves Jesus, she's going to go up uh, with Jesus. And then those who are alive, those who are alive shall be caught up in the air with Jesus. When I first got saved, hallelujah, when I first got saved, praise God, amen. I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Three months after I received the Holy Spirit, I had a vision. I never, I never experienced anything like this. I looked out this big window to cornfields because I was up in, in the hills of Pennsylvania. And, and there I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I look and I see this, this, I have this vision. And I see this cloud coming down from the heavens. And I see Jesus is in the midst of the cloud. He's in the middle of the cloud. And there's people from many cultures. And they're all near. Healing. They're worshiping him and they're praising God. And, and that was my very first experience of that kind in the Lord Jesus Christ, the coming of Jesus. Let me tell you why you are alive today. Let me tell you why God wants to get you ready. He wants to get you ready because he is coming for you. He is coming for you as sure as you're here. You say, well, pastor, you know, what if he doesn't come today? It don't matter. Maybe 50 years from now. But, you know, God's day happens every day. Because you don't know when God's going to call your body to leave this world. 
You don't know when God's going to call you to live this earth. And one thing for sure, you want to be ready for him. Can I get an amen? amen. You want to be prepared. Amen. And you want to have strong faith. I'm going to stop there. You want to have strong faith. Strong faith to receive your day. Strong faith to receive what God has for you, man. Man, it may not be the coming of Jesus, but it may be a calling here in the church. It may be a call to serve him. It may be a call, amen, to proclaim his name. Hallelujah. To be a witness for him. Amen. God has a word for every one of us. But are you ready? Are you ready? You say, Pastor, how ready should I be? Everything you can get. Everything you can get. Everything you can get from God, you want. Don't settle for second best. Don't settle for just a casual kind of Christianity. We live in a world, a radical world, where it demands radical faith. It demands radical Christianity. Amen. And we're going to change this world. Hallelujah. Have you noticed how the world is changing children's lives? You notice how the world is, is telling parents today that they don't know what they're doing? They want to give kids the right to change their own sex. They don't even have to consent with their parents. They're legalizing drugs. State of Virginia just legalized marijuana. I know and I understand there may be some benefits to that. But don't you see all of this is coming to a closure. All of this is a call from God to be awakened. Wake up and let the light of Jesus shine upon your life. Rise up and praise his name, amen. Rise up and be bold for Jesus in this last generation. I don't know about you, but I want to be ready for him. I want God to do everything he needs to do in my life to get me ready. I want you to bow your heads, please. Everybody in this house should bow, bow your heads. I don't know where you are with the Lord. I don't know where you are with God. You say, Pastor, I was really blessed during this conference. That's great. But there might be some areas in your life that you have compromised in your walk with him. And you want to surrender those areas to him. You want to make sure that nothing gets in the way. You want to make sure that your faith is strong and clear. That that oil is burning in your life. When the call comes, maybe you're battling something right now that's keeping you back. It's just holding you back from going forward. You've always battled it. You're, it's always been there. Well, it's time to kill it in the name of Jesus. And I found out a long time ago that if, if I struggle with something, I got to take it to the cross. We got to take it to the cross. Amen. We got to put it under the blood of Jesus. Come on. We got to put it under the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And this morning, I want to challenge you to bring it to Jesus, whatever it is. Whatever it is. I'm going to call everybody here this morning that would say, Pastor, I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I know I'm not where I'm supposed to be, but I want to be ready. I want you to get out from where you stand and come to the altar. We're going to pray in the name of Jesus. Bring it to God.